In this lesson, we'll see how to set up our streaming video content on the web page. Since we've got our formats all ready from the last lesson, we're ready to take a look at the code behind this. So let's open up the video sample HTML file in our text editor. So far you can see we've just got a heading here. So let's add in our video right beneath it. I'll start things out by adding in the video tag. Now to select the streaming video we want, I'll add in a source attribute, which is just like the one we use on our images. Our videos are all in the same folder as our HTML file, so all we'll need is the file name. Now also, like the images that we put on our pages, it's a good idea to use the width and height attributes for our video tag. If we don't include those, our browser will actually have to download the entire video just to see how big it is, so it can fit it on the page with the rest of our elements. And with it included, our page won't bounce or flicker when the video finishes loading for the stream. So I'll set my width to 640 pixels, and the height to 360. Now so far what we have will place our video on the page, but in order to have it play, I'll need to add in the autoplay attribute. Notice that the autoplay attribute doesn't need to have a value. It just needs to be there to turn the autoplay feature on. And that way our video will start playing once the page is finished loading. Now I'll finish off the first part of the tag, and our video tag also has a closing tag. Inside as a child of the video tag, we can leave a message for anyone who doesn't have a browser that's capable of playing our video. It's always a good idea to have some text like this as a fallback, just in case your page is opened up in some really old browsers. This message will only display in browsers that don't support the video element. Now, with our tag, we have a bare minimum of what we need to have the video play on the page. Now let's save our changes so far, and we'll load up our page in the browser. There you can see our page loads up with the video, and it's also started playing. It's not a particularly exciting video, it's just me making a coffee. But it's enough to see that we have full playback and loading of our video with the code that we've got so far. Now if you want to have your user take control of the video, we can go back to the code. And what I'll do is I'll just trade out the autoplay attribute with the controls attribute. Just like autoplay, this attribute doesn't have a value, it just needs to be there. And what it will do is add a full set of controls to our video playback. So let's save our change now, and we'll go back and refresh our page. This time as the video loads up, we can see that it's not automatically playing because we removed the autoplay attribute, and we can see the full control set we have down here. Here we have a play button, and that starts our video playing again. We can hit pause, and we can control the volume, and even go full screen if we want to. We can also set up the video to have a poster image, so let's go back to our code and try that. For that, we'll need to add an attribute here, so I'll put it at the end, and it's called poster. Inside the poster attribute, we can just add the path to any image that we want placed at the beginning of the video, before the playback starts. I've got one in here called latte poster JPEG, so I'll just copy the file name, and we'll place it in here into the value for our attribute. This time when I save the changes, and we go back out and refresh the browser, you can see that I have my poster image here in place, so I can have whatever kind of message I want for my users. And when they click the play button, it goes back to playing the video like normal. Now so far with our video, we're only playing the MP4 file version. So if we tested this page in a bunch of different browsers right now, we might find a few where it wasn't working properly. 
Since we went to all the trouble of making our file into three formats, what I'd like to do next is modify our video tags so that it uses all three. So what we'll do to start with is we'll remove the source attribute from the tag completely. I'll cut it from there. And then down inside the video tag, I'll add a new tag called source. We can use this tag to specify multiple source files. And inside the tag, I'll just paste my attribute back in. Now the only other attribute we need is actually optional, but it's a really good idea to put it in. It's the type attribute. And for this one, our type is a video file, and it's mp4. Now all we need to do to access our other two source types is to add a source tag for them as well. So first I'll copy this one, and I'll paste two more in that we can use. And then we'll set up our two other formats. We can see that we have the WebM format, so I'll just copy that file name and replace the source file path in the second source tag. This one's also going to be video, but it'll be WebM this time. And then we'll do the same thing for the OGTheora file. And this time, our video type will be video slash OGG. Now, when a web browser loads our page, it'll first try the first video type. And if that doesn't work, it'll skip off to the second and finally to the third. So you can see our page is going to be much more compatible with different types. You can change the order of the sources if you want to. Ours right now is mostly biased towards playback with phone and tablet devices. But remember, MP4 will also work in Safari and Chrome for now. So if you wanted this page to be much more biased towards desktop, we could just switch the WebM format up first. We definitely want to include the type attribute, since that will really help the performance of the page. Without it, the browser will actually have to download each of the files to see what type it is. So you can see that would be a lot of download if we made it all the way down to the OGG file. Now let's save our changes. And when we go back over to our page, we should see that the video loads exactly the same as it did before. We're just picking up the MP4 file off the top. And we can still play and pause and control it like before. Now one other thing we can say about the video tag is that you can also use the same method to stream audio files on your page. The functionality and the attributes are the same. I would just switch out the video tag with an audio tag. And of course I'd probably remove the width and height and poster controls for it. Our formats are the same, the control attributes the same, as well as the autoplay attribute. And there's a few other attributes you can use as well, like loop. Well, now that we've seen how to add a video to our page, it's time for us to go back over to our website project and add a video in there.